time lapse enthusiasts, this is Jay, aka MyLapse. Um, I want to show you a couple of things today that are pretty freaking cool. Uh, first of all, the, the Dynamic Perception MX2 controller can control the Panasonic line of cameras, so the G1, the GH1, the up and coming GH2. Uh, and also some of their smaller compacts. The Micro Four Thirds system is really cool. I'm a big fan of it. So I'm pretty excited that we can now control this camera with the MX2 controller. Today I'm going to show you something sort of unique that our system can do. Um, I'm going to use the Panasonic's Focus Lock system and lock focus on an object. And then I'm going to push into that object and effectively the camera is going to pull focus by maintaining that lock of focus on the object. So I'm going to let this go over a good period of time here, maybe an hour or so. It's very sunny out right now, so we should get some pretty interesting shadow play, uh, not only on the object, but also in the background. Alright, here's my setup with the Panasonic GH1. Uh, here's the MX2 controller. I'm also going to show you some of the new firmware features on the MX2. We're still waiting on the enclosure. It's being manufactured right now, so hopefully we'll be able to show that to you really soon. Um, it's connected via via a shutter trigger to the to the Panasonic camera. The interesting thing about the Panasonic shutter jack is it uses a four-pole connector. Two of the poles it uses for the stereo input for the mic. The other pole it uses to trigger the camera. The weird thing is that it uses resistance to tell it to focus and to tell it to shoot. Um, all that's taken care of in this, in this cable. You can see there's a little box right here. And what that does is that sends the correct resistance to the camera to tell it either to focus or to fire the shutter. Okay, so here's my setup. For the moment I've disconnected the uh, motor so I can sort of test um, what it looks like as I come in. I had to set the lens to a somewhat long focal length. It's at 50, which is about the equivalent to 100 on the Micro Four Thirds sensor. Also, this, this stock lens doesn't have the biggest aperture. I think it's about 5.5 is the max for it. So to get a nice depth of field effect going on, I had to effectively um, zoom in pretty close. All right, here's the MX2 um, loaded with the latest firmware. We've got some new features in here, so I'll kind of show the, show you those as I go here, um, showing you how I set up this particular shot. Um, for this one, I'm going to use a 10 second interval. Uh, we've added tenth of a second to the interval, so you can actually get uh, tenth of a second intervals, or I should say, you can get tenth of a second granularity uh, in your interval. So that's one new feature of the new firmware. So let's put it to 10 for this particular one. Um, the other thing that we have added to the firmware is fixed move shoot mode and let's go into the menu system so I can show you where that is. I'm going to go into the menu system using the far left button, go down to axis 1 which is this this axis right here, go in um, and then down here is a setting called fixed SMS and that means fixed shoot move shoot and let's go in and you can see I've already got it set on right now so what it's going to do is basically it'll, it has a fixed amount of movement per shot. So each shot, it'll take a shot and then it'll move a fixed amount. If I were to change the interval, that would not affect the distance that it would travel. It would continue to sh travel the exact same distance every single shot. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to go back out of this menu system and back to the top. Uh, and so what I have set here is 0.1 inches per shot. So about a tenth of an inch per shot as we move in to this particular object. I think that will work pretty well. So there's a couple of settings I had to set up in the camera 
area here. So let's go down to the camera and enter. A couple of things I had to set up to make sure that the um, Panasonic would work with this particular application. One, the first thing I needed to do was um, I pumped up my exposure time to half of a second to make sure that the camera understood that I wanted an actual shot. Uh, so half a second on the exposure time, and that's the amount of time that it holds the trigger open on the on the MX2. So let's go back. Um, the other thing that I set up was the focus taps tap time, and I actually set this to a pretty high number. I set it to one second, and that's to make sure that the camera locks on with that focus. So it's going to hold down the focus for an entire second to make sure that it locks down that focus and um, locks it onto the object. And we'll show you, I'll show you how I do that in a second. Um, so that is set to one second. Just figured it out from a little bit of playing around. Now let's go back. Um, the other thing I did was I set an exposure delay of one second. Uh, just so that there's plenty of time for the shutter to um, shoot and then it'll hold off for another second before the 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 cart actually moves forward. So just a little um, extra uh, buffer time in there if you will. So let's go back. So that's all there basically uh, was. We just you just needed to get that focus um, time a little higher so that the camera can lock on to its its object. So now let's look at the way the um, GH1 is going to lock on. So to get the GH1 to lock on your object, you'll need to press the left button in the uh, four button array on the back of the camera. So I'm going to press the left button and the second setting here is the focus lock setting. So I'm going to choose that and then I also have the camera set to autofocus single or AFS on the, on the body. So once you set that up you get a, a, a sort of box right in the center of the of the screen, and by by pressing the shutter, we lock on to that object. So I'm holding down the shutter only to its focus level. It's locked on. Now I'm going to press all the way to get a test shot. It looks it's looking a little underexposed here. I better uh, I'm losing all my light. So there we go. Let's bring our exposure up. Actually, I'm going to overexpose it just a tad, just so that as it gets darker here, it'll stay in focus. So now, if you can see that, there's actually, it's green, and it's a small box, and it's locked onto my object. And even if I move it a little bit here, it'll, it'll, it'll actually keep locked on that object. You can see there, it moved a little bit. It's, now it's, it's totally locked onto that object. So even though my camera is going to move forward, it's going to actually focus every time and it's locked on to that particular object. So now let's get this thing going and uh, see what happens. Okay, so like I said, I have it all set up. I'm going to go ahead and start the system. Uh, oops, I got it going the wrong direction. Let's make it go the right direction. And now on she goes. Okay, so off she goes. Uh, it's looking pretty good on the on the preview here. Okay, so each time what's happening is um, I'm seeing the my my focus lock box is still right on my object. It's uh, actually right in the middle of my my little gremlin here. Um, each time I can see the one second focus tap, and I can see a green box appearing saying yes, I have actually you know made focus on the object. Um, then we can hear the trigger firing. Boom, there it goes. And after the trigger is fired, it moves on to its uh, next position.